Welcome to Contractor Sense. Here you discover ideas, tactics, news, and information that matters to your contracting business and you. I'm your host, Ruth King. This episode is sponsored by HVAC Trustbooks. Go to HVACTrustbooks.com to discover how this tool can help you close more sales. Thank you for joining us. Here is how we will help your business and you today. It's hot. Please avoid the seven mistakes. You'll decrease your frustration and increase your productivity and profitability. I want you to have cash at the end of the summer and make sure that all of your sales this summer, as crazy as it's been and is being right now, are profitable so that you not only make profit, you turn that profit into cash. All right, so here are seven things to do. Number one is to continue to bill and collect. This is so critical. I walked into a contractor's office and on his desk, this was the end of August, were all of the financing paperwork for the jobs that he had done for the past six weeks. He never collected his money. Crazy. I looked at him and he said, well, we were too busy putting in jobs for me to go back and have some sales, one of my salespeople go back and get the customer to sign off on the paperwork. Craziness, absolute craziness. Now, the customer, think about it this way. The customer says, oh, I haven't paid for this in six weeks. They, may not, they must not need the money, well, which is probably true in the summer because cash flow is, is very pl- you know, plentiful. However, you do always need the money. I don't care whether it's busy or whether it's slow. You have to collect for the work that you do. So if the installation crews are not responsible for getting the customer sign off on the paperwork for financing, then the salesperson must go back at the end of that job and get it signed. The last thing you want to do is have your things wait for six weeks because they've forgotten about it by that particular point. And you want to make sure that they pay for the work that you've installed. It's really, really important. Likewise, for those of you who do commercial work, you've got to make sure that the invoices go out on a daily basis, seriously on a daily basis, or If it takes a week and you only do it once a week, somebody's going to be working a lot of overtime once a week. It's very important that all of your bills continue to go out. It's very important that you don't let collecting COD on a residential basis slip through the cracks. Text note that they would be collecting. The dispatcher is asking the question, Mrs. Jones, payments due upon completion of this call. Will you be paying by cash, check, or credit card? And putting that information in the notes. All right, go to the bank every day. I don't want to see thousands of dollars of checks in your offices. Well, we only got a couple hundred dollars this day, today. I don't care. Go to the bank every day. Now, some of you have remote capture, which means you can make a deposit every single day. Even if it's $500 or $200 or $100, make the deposit in your bank account every single day. Get used to it. It's your cash. Profits are important because they turn into cash. Obviously, you want to be profitable to have positive cash. In the summertime, you're getting so busy and cash is so plentiful, you sometimes forget to be profitable. Do both, all right? Number two, maintenance agreement clients come first. Even if you have to turn away a COD call, maintenance agreement clients are loyal to you and you must be loyal to them. They've signed a piece of paper to that effect. Their needs must come before people who may be calling 10 contractors to see who comes first. If, you know, in the various busiest times of the year and the contractor who they normally work with can't get to them, people will start calling around. And if you drop and you move a maintenance agreement customer or in in the case of a warranty customer who is in a situation where there's a leak coming in or something water coming down a ceiling, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those go first. Then you take the COD calls. Let's talk about warranty for a second, though. I mean, it also depends upon the type of warranty. If it's a water leak or something along those lines, you're going even before a maintenance agreement customer. If it is a hospital operating room, you are going before a residential maintenance customer. One of uh, the people who took service manager school a couple of years ago had all of the San Francisco hospitals and was responsible for all the boilers. 
And if a boiler went down, everybody stopped what they were doing and they went because, and I didn't know this until then, that most hospitals only have two hours of sterilized equipment for operations. Can you imagine shutting down a hospital because a boiler failed? Not likely. So those types of situations come first. And then your maintenance customers, obviously, obviously the hospitals have a maintenance agreement. So they come first, warranty issues. You know, if somebody's just spent $10,000 with you and their system's not working, you're going. Then finally, all those COD calls of people who are calling around just to see who can come because the company that they're currently working with is too busy. Number three, don't tell a customer that you're busy. I hear dispatchers all the time giving a, we're busy, I'm sorry, excuse to customers. Customers don't care. They could care less that you're busy. All they want to hear is that you're going to take care of their problem quickly. Now, what do you do if it's somebody who is not, has never called you before or something along those lines? You say, Mrs. Jones, our first available appointment is, and I can put you on a waiting list in case we have a cancellation. And if it's two days or three days later, then you can say, we will call you the day before to make sure you still need us to come out. So if these are people who don't know you from, you know, this is the first time they're calling because they're searching on the internet for somebody to come out and take care of them, they're not your priority. And they also don't care that you're busy. Okay. So the idea is to tell the customers what you can do for them rather than what you can't do for them. And reassure them, obviously, that you're working to get their problems resolved as quickly as possible. Now, let's take the situation where you do have a maintenance agreement customer and the earliest you can get out there is like 7 o'clock that night and you know the customer has two systems in her home. Or it's a situation where it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon in a commercial environment and you can send somebody out. It will be overtime for the commercial if you, there is not overtime with the maintenance agreement. Some commercial companies do no overtime, some actually have overtime. Here is the question to ask. Mrs. Jones, thank you for being a maintenance customer. I can have a technician out there tonight. It will be somewhere between 7.30 and 8 or 8 and 9, whatever the time frame is. Would you like me to send him out then or would you like me to have him come first thing in the morning? And some of your maintenance customers will say, now I just have him come in the morning, I have another system, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or others may say, yes, get out here even if it's 9 or 10 o'clock tonight. And in those cases, you're going whether it's 9 or 10 o'clock tonight. From a commercial perspective, if the customer is a maintenance customer but there still are overtime charges and they call at, let's say, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you can say, Mrs. Smith, thank you for being a maintenance customer. I can have one of our technicians out there at 6 or 7 o'clock tonight. Will somebody be there? And will be somebody there to approve overtime charges? Unless it's a 24-hour operation, more than likely, they don't. nobody's going to wait until 6 or 7 o'clock at night. They'll tell you to come first thing in the morning. And if it's really bad, they will approve overtime charges if they want you to come out that evening. Okay, when we get back, I'll give you the other four things that you should never do when it is busy. Thanks for listening to Contractor Sense. I've seen my clients' salespeople struggle when a customer asks why they should use your company rather than the competition when your price is higher and you both are proposing the same equipment. I've seen technicians struggle when customers ask them whether they should replace an 18-year-old air conditioner. And most salespeople and technicians never ask the one question that most customers are concerned about, yet never ask. Can I trust you? I found a tool that gives your salespeople and technicians the ammunition to answer this question and more. And the tool works. How do I know? 68% of my clients are using it to increase sales and referrals. What is it? A trust book with your name on it as the author. More details are at HVACTrustBooks.com. Warning, there is only one contractor per area that can get these great books. Some areas are already taken. They've gone to my clients. If you want your area and want to have a tool for your salespeople and technicians to increase referrals and sales, then go to HVACTrustBooks.com now and reserve your area. Eliminate costly warranty leak repair headaches. Three years ago, Ruth King wrote a leak policy letter for one of her clients who was dealing with huge warranty leak issues. 
and she gave the letter to technicians and trained them on how to use it. Warranty leaks went from zero, that's right, zero. Then she gave the letter to one of her other clients and any contractor who wanted it. The results? The same, zero warranty leak repairs. The unexpected benefits? An increase in replacement sales. Ruth shares his letter with anyone and everyone who wants it. So get your sample leak policy letter for free. No strings, no catches, no guarantee of results. Go to hvacchannel.tv or call us at 877-520-4321. Click on the link in the middle of the homepage to get your free leak policy letter. I hope you experience zero warranty leak repairs and eliminate a major costly headache. Thanks for listening to Contractor Sense. Before the break, I gave you the first three no-nos of when it gets busy. Number one, you've got to continue to bill and collect. Number two, maintenance agreement clients come first over COD clients. Number three, don't tell a customer that you're busy. Okay, let's go on to number four. I want you to discipline as if it's a slower time of the year. People get sloppy when they get busy, and it's really sad to see. And I mean sloppy not following the rules. They'll follow the rules when it's slower and not follow the rules when it is busy. I mean, your best technician does something really dumb, really stupid, and you've got to discipline him, even though it's busy, as if it was slow. The rules are the rules, whether it is busy, whether it is slow, whether it is, you know, a fireable offense. It hurts like hell, excuse me for saying it that way, to fire a technician or an installer when it is very busy. It really does hurt, but fireable offenses are fireable offenses, whether it's busy, whether it's slow, whether it's hot or in between, whatever. You've got a discipline and the rules are the rules, and it's tough when it's hot. Number five, please make sure that there's water in all of your trucks. Make sure your, your crews have water and that they do drink it. It's critical that they drink water when it's hot. By 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they're probably tired. Drinking water helps them keep alert. Okay. Now, if they're, in, if they're in hot attics or they're on roofs, it's really important for them to come down and, and take a cool-off break. I had many years ago in the very hot Chicago summer a service technician go up on a roof and then never come down from the roof. He died of a stroke on that roof of a heat stroke. So it's really, it, it's really important that they take water, they drink water, that they take breaks. I think most of the supply houses now have water in the supply houses. They have ice in the supply houses. Make sure that all of your technicians take water with them so that they drink it during the day. Okay. Make sure that they look for the signs of heat exhaustion. You want them aware of what may be happening to them so they can prevent getting sick hurting themselves, unfortunately passing away on a roof, which I would prefer never to happen to anybody. And if one of your dispatchers starts to talk to one of your technicians or installation crews and the technician is sounding loopy, and I don't know whether a way to describe that, but they're not making sense, he is to pull over, he is to go someplace cool, get a drink, and, and basically cool off. There are many areas of the country where they start at 3 o'clock in the morning when it's really, really hot, simply because they have to be out of the attics and off the roofs by 11 o'clock in the morning. If you got to do it, you got to do it. If customers complain, you say, okay, well, we'll see you in November. And they all go, no, I'll get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to get this done because they want to get cool and they want to stay cool. So make sure that there's water in the trucks and if the technician or the installation crew starts sounding weird, make them stop, make them calm, cool off, and then they can get back to work again. Okay. Number six is quitting a job that will only take another hour to finish is absolutely insane. From the customer's perspective, they really enjoy and appreciate the fact that you're going to spend the extra time to finish the job that day because they want to be cool that night too. And I promise you, stopping for the hour, quitting for the day. Next day will take you almost half a day to finish that job. By the time you figure in 
they got to go back to the shop. They got to get their trucks. They got to get their load up their trucks for the next day. Go to this house first, get it done, and then go to the next house. Not fun. Just let them stay an extra hour or two. Get the job done. It is always cheaper for that to happen. You know, if it takes an hour of overtime, it's much better to finish that because it's much cheaper than coming back. They'll spend more than that hour in labor and truck expense getting back to the job and completing it the next day. And number seven, not diagnosing completely, i.e. finding the first thing that's wrong because you your techs know that they have so many other calls to do that day and they want to go home at a reasonable hour and they, and they find the first thing that they see and boom, that's it. They don't bother to take the time to figure out why that particular thing happened. So make sure that your technicians fix the problem, not fix the symptom of the problem. The last thing you need now, really, or at any time of the year, is a callback. This time of year, they hurt triple, simply because you are so busy. All right, so here's the seven things again. Number one, continue to bill and collect. Number two, your maintenance agreement clients come first, even if you have to turn away COD calls. Number three, don't tell a customer that you're busy. Number four, discipline as if it's a slower time of the year. Number five is to make sure you have water in the trucks. Number six is to finish a job if there's an hour of overtime on it. Don't quit until the job is done. And number seven, please diagnose completely, fix the symptom and the disease. So thank you for joining us. Choose one thing that you discovered and implement it in your business. These ideas, tactics, and strategies help you make more money, have more free time, and give back. If you like today's program, spread the word. Please review this podcast on any device you're listening to it on. Help a fellow contractor make more money, too. For comments or questions, call me at 770-729-0258 or email ruthking at hvacchannel.tv. I love hearing from you. Thanks for listening. Have a great and profitable day.